Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and this will be the introduction video to my new series on blueprints in Unreal 4. Um, so this one in the introduction I'll just show you what's different from Unreal 3 and what's basically the same and then I'll mostly focus on blueprints for the rest of the series uh, using my platformer game as an example. Uh, as you can see here it doesn't quite look like uh, the video I made before because I've just only imported this from the beta tools into the public release uh, because I obviously weren't allowed to uh, to show the beta tools um, and I haven't changed any of the models to sort of, uh, to the ones with the new textures and stuff so it's just a little bit different um, but yeah if you're familiar with Unreal 3 or you've watched some of my old Kismet videos if you want to make any sort of that stuff in Unreal Energy 4, where you want to do it is in the level blueprint, which is basically where you put stuff like uh, matinee things and level specific things. Um, in this case, it's completely blank. As you can see, I've zoomed out here, there's nothing in it. Uh, because I've put everything into separate blueprints, which allows you to place them in levels instead. Um, like as you can see here uh, in the bottom left, this is the player spawn. Um, this is an enemy spawn, and basically that's the only one thing um, I place in the level here, because everything else is basically spawned from these, um, yeah, just placeholder blueprints. Uh, because what I've done is uh, I have scripts running that sort of snap enemies to to walls and things like that, just so I can never place them in the wrong direction. As you can see here, if I drag the widget, it sort of snaps, and then I can move it around and it snaps again. Um, so then, what is a blueprint? Um, if I open up the wall enemy, which is the actual enemy and not the uh, spawn point, um, you have these three tabs. You have defaults, components, and graph. So the defaults is basically the old options menu. Like if you hit F4 in Unreal 3, you get this sort of uh, properties window showing you different things you can um, adjust. Like if I go into the editor and I just drag one of these enemies into the game, you, you will get this um, details tab up here showing you a few of, this, uh, of these options. But as you can see, there are only a few of them uh, in the default here. And that is because we can actually change um, what variables we want to show in the uh, in the tab here. Uh, if you've done anything with Unity, this is very similar to the their uh, prefab thingy. Uh, you can basically send uh, variables to the default tab. So if you're the scripter um, and uh, someone else is the level designer, you can basically say, say these are the things that they're allowed to change, but they can't interact with the uh, sort of scripting. Because that means you can change the scripting, but keep the public variables and everything will uh, basically stay the same and work in the same way. Um, so that's the defaults menu. Um, there are a few things here I won't go into too much time with. Uh, the next one is the components tab, and this is where you put um, you put meshes, you put particle effects, uh, you put lights. Let's say, for instance, you want a light, um, or we say you want a fire. That means you have a fire model, you have a fire particle effect, you have a trigger box. Uh, all of these uh, components, you have a light, perhaps with a light effect. Uh, so you basically just put all of them into this components tab and you sort of arrange them. Like I can add, as you can see, there's just the root, which is the box here. And then I just have one mesh, a cylinder. You can add another thing. You can add, uh, where is it? It's somewhere down here, a mesh, custom mesh, perhaps. Uh, as you can see here, everything is super small because I've tried to minimize the 
uh, interface just to show you as much as possible of the window. Um, let's not use custom mesh, it should be a static mesh. Um, let's just search static mesh, boom. And then you can just attach this to the top here and as you can see it becomes a tree and now the other mesh which, which is invisible because I haven't selected anything. Um, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't want to put too much time into this uh, because I'll do it again in a, a separate video. Uh, so let's just delete that and everything is as it should be. Um, and then you also have your graph window which is uh, basically where you do your scripting. Um, if you've done stuff with Unity you will have um, separate scripts uh, with code but in this case it's basically like separate Kismet script that runs for this class and this class only. Um, so you will have a construction script which in this case is empty but the thing you saw um, like when I move stuff around um, it runs the construction script which basically just snaps the uh, the spawn point to the wall here. You can see the red dot above the uh, the lizard head or the dinosaur head. Uh, it's basically a line trace that checks for collision uh, and when it collides it uh, translates the, uh, the spawn point. So that is the construction script. It runs only when you do stuff with it in the editor. Um, and then you have the event graph which runs only when um, the game is running. And then you have uh, sort of special cases which I'll get to later. Um, and if you've used Kismet um, you basically start with an event uh, and then you go um, right. As you can see here this is a tick which calls every frame. There are a few other things that you can um, add. I can go into the event here. You have stuff like begin play which is obviously when the, uh, the game begins. Destroyed when the actor is destroyed. It's the last thing called. Uh, possessed is when a player gets control of it. Uh, unpossessed is when the player loses control. And then you also have stuff like uh, begin overlap with collision, uh, take damage, mouse input like when you click on it, and touch input which is only for um, yeah touch capable devices. I haven't done anything with it. Um, so you basically start with an event. You can also create custom events like you could in Unreal 3. Um, and then you basically go right from there using these uh, flow control nodes like branches uh, which is just a true or false sequence which does um, nodes in a certain order. Um, let's see here, I can right click and I can go to flow control. Um, yeah, do n which is just do a number of times, do once, flip flops which is between two nodes, uh, gates which were in Unreal as well, Unreal 3 and then you have a bunch of switches which is just for instance switch on int uh, you can do, uh, let's just add a few pins to this one so it basically just takes an int as a switch and then if the int is zero it does that node etc so you basically just hook up a bunch of nodes in order and then it hopefully does what you want it to do. Much like Kismet. Um, the difference is you will tend to use fewer events. Uh, I basically only have begin play and tick driving all of uh, all of my separate blueprints. Um, I have a couple of inputs for the player as well. Um, but yeah, you can also not have two identical events in the same class. Like if I want to uh, add a separate tick, I can't. It just jumps to the one existing. Which means you will basically do all your stuff from the same tick node. Um, using 
something like a sequence uh, going through the separate um, separate ones. I'll just show you uh, as you can see here this is my tick in this case um, so I have a sequence doing five different things uh, and you can also collapse nodes which I don't think you could uh, so if I hover over this one you can see the um, what it looks like below the collapse node and if I double click it I go into the uh, expanded node which is where I send all my stuff to the HUD class in this case uh, and then I just hit my back button and I go back to the big one um, here you have another tree and so you can basically have all of these bunches of nodes collapsed making everything look much smoother and then you can also add these uh, comment boxes just like uh, you did in Unreal 3 but the biggest part of um, of the the sort of new blueprint kismet is that you can only hook certain um, certain things into other things. For instance, you can't uh, in mo most cases you cannot hook um, uh, one node into uh, a bunch of different nodes. For instance. Um, you have to have either sequences between them to break the tree up or you need branches. Uh, for instance, I don't think I could hook this into another branch. Now, as you can see there, it just takes the path that went from this input axis to the branch up here and it just added the other branch in between. Because you can't have um, things that should be running simultaneously, basically. Um, you have to have them go in a specific order and then when you compile um, it will check to see if it can go just straight across and in that case it will give you an error but most of the times it will just sort of fix itself because as you can see there if you have a connection already you do not have to break that one you can add things in between uh, we can have an add for instance so it just adds it in between and then you can uh, make, sp make space obviously. Um, another difference is you um, or the menu is um, context sensitive basically meaning if you have um, a bool as you can see here the tree is really small you can call a bunch of different things. Compare this to if we drag this one you will have uh, many many more nodes and if you compare something like a float, um, let's just make a float, uh, make a literal float, value zero. Um, as you can see, this also has three only. And if we plug, uh, we hit plus, um, you basically get the only things you can add to floats. So you can do float plus float, vector plus float, and 2D vector plus float. And these are the only uh, floats you can add to each other. Um, so the context sensitivity is uh, very much appreciated. There are also a few hotkeys and the, and the only one I use is hold B which gives you a branch node. Um, because if we just... Uh, you can do it another way as well, like if we drag from true and you just hit BRA you will also get branch. Uh, but yeah, that's the only hotkey I use. I haven't really... Uh, I don't know the other ones. Uh, but there are probably videos and things in the manual about those. Um, but yeah, most of the stuff I use is actually branches. As you can see here, you basically have an event, then you have a bunch of branches and sequences uh, doing uh, this sort of logic um, and then you have these sort of the core of the um, this sort of instance which tends to be nodes that I use very rarely and for everything that is um, sort of dependent on math there is a lot of make vector and break vector uh, because if you get something uh, let's say you want to make a jump for instance. This is the jump function. 
basically what you do is you get the character movement, basically the position of the player. Then you break that vector uh, into its x, y, and z components and then you just add to one of them. So you take the... because obviously if you just want to jump straight up you, um, you take the position and then you just add z. That's the essential thing here. It's the same for movement, like if you want to move left right you just add x in my case because that's just the direction chosen. You could do y as well. And then you have stuff like delays, gates, um, and these sort of rare nodes, which I will get back to later. Um, what you also have to the left here is uh, the variable window, um, which is where you sort of create your variables, because uh, you can use uh, make literal, like I showed you. If you want to use uh, for instance, uh, an int in just one specific place, and you don't want to access it, access it every or anywhere else. You just make literal int, and then you just have a local int that you use in that specific case. But if you want to use it anywhere else, uh, you create um, a variable, and I can increase the window here. As you can see, I have a bunch of them and they are all color-coded. Green ones are floats, blue ones are this is a game object, red is bool, this green is an int, and yeah, when I hover over them you can see. The uh, nine square thingies are all arrays. You can create an int array and then it will be green uh, with nine squares. Um, and a bunch of variables. And as you can see at the far right here, these are uh, public. Uh, you can fill in tooltip if you want to. As you can see, it shows me a warning here. So this is a public one, target game handler, um, which it's probably... Oh yeah, um, I no longer have the game handler object. I just uh, forgot to rename this. Um, so if you want to see here in the in the defaults menu. If we go to the default panel, uh, this is the character. All oh, right, we'll just take the enemy one because this one has much fewer. Um, and we'll just go to the graph here. I will expand the variables window because as you can see here I have three um, wall state, meaning which uh, which side of the enemy the wall is currently. Uh, it just keeps track of that. Clockwise, meaning if it goes around the platform clockwise or counterclockwise. And player damage, which is how much damage it does to the player. And then if we go into the um, into the window here and we drag one in, you can see there is wall state, there is clockwise and there is player damage. Um, then what I can do, just to show you what happens, is if we take move speed, for instance. Maybe you want to change the move speed. You just uh, click on it, and then it has an open eye. You click compile, and it is successful. And then you have move speed here as well. Which means you can set move speed separately for every instance of this object. Like if you want to have two separate uh, enemies on the same platform going different speeds. You could also do something in the construction script um, which changes move speed. I'll just uncheck this and then we set move speed and then we do random float in range. So you could set the move speed for each separate object. We'll just do this and then you want like 100 to 200 for instance. This would mean that every created instance of this object would have a separate move speed. Um, and if you wanted to, you could also have uh, these variables be, um, be changeable. But then we'd have to add, so we just click the plus variable Whoops, the window is really tiny. So we just uh, double click down here. Now, let's just make it a float first. And here is where you can see 
make this variable an array. So you just click that one, but that's not what we want right now. So you just take min move speed, and then it's created at the top here. We click another one, max move speed. We hook, oops, you can actually, dra actually drag from the variables window just straight onto it and it will create it. Or you can drag it in here, get, boom. Um, if you want to set it, you will always have to uh, drag in and click the set one. And as you can see, this one is a separate node and you cannot change or you can change. Uh, for instance, we can hook the min move speed up to that one and it will give you a really weird name. So I prefer to just drag it in normally. So you can just do it like this and you can either, oh yeah, it doesn't, you can't change it before compiling. So you can either set it manually in here, 100 to 200 and unless you're running the game or in the event graph you will not be able to see uh, variables but I can actually show you that. So this would mean that um, move speed would be different for each uh, each of these enemies. Um, I could actually show you um, let's just stop it. Oh yeah. Uh, as you can see, when you put things way up in the space, it will not find the find a wall, so it won't work. Which is why I use the um, the spawn point method instead. Uh, but what you can do is, uh, when running the game, um, I think this should work. Like if I just hit play here, you can see it becomes yellow, which means the game is running in the background. Um, so if we go to this uh, event graph and we select one of these instances, uh, they're all running. And as you can see here, it's moving from tick all the way. Um, yeah, so this is wake on player touch, meaning that uh, I'm, I don't activate the enemies before the player is uh, close to them, just because I want to be able to uh, sort of predict where the enemy will be when the player uh, gets close. So this enemy is not yet um, woken up, so it's not one of those... That's not... I'm trying to find the one that's just above, above the player spawn, because it should be the only one active. It should probably be the one... Nope. Weird. One of these enemies should be active. That's the one. So as you can see here, it's running the tick and it goes to um, movement. Oh crap, it doesn't work. Yeah, okay, it's buggy. <sighs> Sigh. So it's currently just going um, straight off the map somewhere. Um, it doesn't quite work as it should. Um, but yeah, if we go into this one we should be able to find move speed and we should be able to see what the value of it is. Um, here is the transform. And if we hover over this one you can see it's currently 154.22229. Um, meaning that the random effect or the random move speed actually worked, even though the rest of it doesn't seem to. So that is how you use variables and the difference between the construction script and the event graph. Um, you have your defaults menu and how to send variables to, uh, to this menu. Uh, obviously they don't show up here, but they show up uh, in the editor. Um, components I didn't do much with. I can just show you the player. Uh, it's a little bit different. I have it here, jump character. Um, it basically has the player model, which is this one. It has a capsule, capsule, however you pronounce that, thingy that I use for collision and movement. You have your sword here. I'll just 
I can just jump in. So there's the sword. And as you can see, the the enemy is going around the platform and it actually works sometimes. Uh, but yeah, that's the sort of introduction to blueprints and I hope you liked it. The next one will probably be up. Um, I don't know. I just got a new bunch of books today. So I might be busy. I also have a couple of other things planned. But yeah, as you can see here, the enemies are actually moving at different speeds. So yay for blueprints. This has been Jonas doing the first video on Unreal 4 Blueprints. If you want to check out more videos, there are a bunch of them on the Unreal channel. Um, but thank you for watching 